This is the final part in the series, so well done for making it this far. In this part of the series, we will combine, support and print our model. Let's start by finalising our details. A cylinder can be used to form the stems of the arrows in the quiver. From a sphere, we can elongate and use a draw sharp to sketch out the arrow tail. Using the X and Y symmetry allows us to make short work of this. Now we have begun to merge the model together, ensure you select all the separate objects and make a duplicate. Hide this away so you have the original shapes in case you want to use parts for future projects. Once things are merged together, it will be difficult to reuse parts of the model. We can define a more shoe-like shape to the foot here. Let's talk a bit about combining shapes to prepare your model for print. So far I've found two main ways to go about this, using the boolean modifier or the voxel remisher. Before merging things together, be sure that you've unparented, applied the scale and any modifiers first to all the objects. Using the boolean modifier enables you to combine shapes in a controlled and accurate fashion. Once combined, the plus to this is that you can be sure your objects will have a nice clean seam where they're connected. For organic forms, this is not always what you want, but for hard surface objects, this is much more desirable. However, using this method comes with its drawbacks. As you can see here, when I apply the modifier between the calf and thigh, the thigh is disappearing. This means there is some sort of error while booling these shapes together. You can fix this by moving one object very slightly. When you hit G to move, hold shift to move with more detail. If this does not work, you can remesh one or both of the objects, as sometimes brushes like pinch can make the topology difficult to boolean. There is an add-on called Bool Tool, which allows you to boolean objects without messing around with the modifier to speed up this method. The remesh method is more straightforward. Simply select all of your objects, hit Ctrl J to combine, then use the voxel remesher. Here I have used 0.15 voxel size. These are way too big and you can see how transitions have smoothed out. This is not what we want. 
so undoing and using 0.05 is much cleaner. You can still see some blurring at the seams though. I think if you had a powerful PC, you could go much lower than this, but it usually crashes Blender for me. However you choose to combine your model, you can use the decimate modifier and reduce the final model size drastically. I usually set my decimate to 0.1. Our forearm and leg armour will need to be tied on somehow. Starting with a cylinder we can scale this to fit around these limbs. Then taking the belt buckle and duplicating this can be scaled and placed on the new straps. Once the forms are merged together, smooth can be used to tidy up the connection points. The bottom of the trunk needs to be perfectly flat so it will sit on a base nicely. Using a cube and the difference boolean, it can trim away the tree trunk base leaving it nice and flat. Before we can merge the eyes, ears and eyebrows to the face, the mirror modifier will need to be applied first. You can quickly apply all modifiers in order for all selected objects by using the convert to mesh command. Now the bulk of the model is merged together, we need to cut out a foot shape so that it rests well on the tree trunk and is easy to position once printed. Going into orthographic mode and selecting the measure tool means we can drag out a ruler over the model. It's great for seeing how big the combined shape will be. To check if the selected object is suitable for 3D printing, you can hit check all on the 3D print toolbox add-on. This will run a variety of tests and in the result area you can see the outcome. To view the specific areas with issues, you can enter edit mode using tab and then the results become buttons you can click to select the affected areas. 
Here you can see after the merge, there is a hole inside the model. Changing your view to wireframe mode by hitting the Z key and using the Pi reveals this. We can place a sphere bigger than the hole around it and merge it into the model to close this up. Another neat feature of the print toolbox is if you go into edit mode and hit check all, click the overhang faces button. Then you will see all the potential islands while printing before entering the slicer. So you have the option here to orient the model first and apply the rotation so that when it's exported it will already have the correct orientation. Using the print toolbox now, we can export the selected model as an STL, ready to open up in our slicer. In this case, I will be using Chitubox to support and slice. So now we have imported our pre-oriented STL files into Chitubox, we can begin supporting each one. Download the support settings I use on Gumroad here. These settings are based upon what YouTuber 3D Printing Pro used at one time. This guy is truly the expert on supporting miniatures, so be sure to check out his tutorials if you haven't already. I have not needed to change these settings for months, as they have worked fine for me so far. The basic theory of supporting a model for print is that anything which will support a lot of material should have a heavy support, then medium and light for less material. This really requires a bit of trial and error to get a feel for what works, but don't stress too much as long as you have a decent amount on each area the print should come out fine. While in the support area on Chitubox, you can quickly switch between add, edit and delete modes by using the A, E and D keys. Double clicking on an existing support while in edit mode allows you to branch off so you can save on resin. When orienting your model, you should try and angle it at 30 degrees as this is the optimal angle for print surface quality, according to Chitubox. Check the description for more info. Watch out for flat parts of the model being parallel to the build plate, as in my experience, this is hard to support, as the whole surface is one big island. If you drag the slider on the right up and down, you can see how each layer of the model will print. Islands are parts of the model which appear separately when you use this slider. Watch out for these and ensure they are supported, otherwise there is no way for them to print. I think I will need to do some separate videos going into this in more detail to provide my own take on the theory of supporting miniatures. Once happy with your supporting efforts, a feeling of doubt may descend upon you. What if I've missed something? You question to yourself. Introducing the Photon File Validator. To use this handy tool, you will need to first slice for the Elegoo Mars printer to output a CBDDLP file. Then, open up the validator and select Open File in the top left. Choose your file. Once it has finished analysing all the layers, hit the fix button to ignore any minor errors. Then you will be left with all the main islands you have missed. Use the arrows to see which layers are affected and then get back into Chitubox to correct these mistakes. Then you can slice for your own printer and get to printing. When it comes to printing itself, 
This is a very broad topic indeed. Check out the excellent resin printing guide from Loot. Of course, the process may vary depending on your own printer. I will perhaps go through my own process in detail in the future. After all said and done, I feel like I have missed many details in these final stages, but as the topics of preparing, supporting and printing itself are so broad, I have found it difficult to fit into this series alone. I'm sure I'll be diving into these topics individually in the future. I hope you have taken something from the series that you can apply to your own sculpting adventure. Please don't hesitate to comment below any questions you have regarding this journey. Perhaps you sculpted along with me, or just watched and absorbed the process. Links to all the resources and channels I have mentioned can be found in the description below. Recently I have completed work on a dwarf warrior so be sure to go check him out on Patreon and Gumroad. Thank you to everyone who supported me throughout this series. See you all in the next video.